Can I just say, this might be the greatest night of my entire life. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Friday night dinner moments. <laughs> 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 Painted it myself. I'm not listening to it on that. Why not? Because it's a duck. It's not a duck. It's a radio. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most hilarious and memorable scenes from this long-running sitcom. Let us know in the comments which one makes you want to drop by the Goodmans for dinner. Number 10, Company Car. Oh, yes, your news. Yes. My news. <sighs> Johnny's an estate agent and has been given a flash company car to drive clients around in. Liz was so happy with my work, she gave me a company car. Though he's excited about the car and proud of moving up in the company, this quickly turns to embarrassment when the rest of the family join him in the garden and see what it is, a novelty car with a fake roof on it, just in case there was any doubt about what his proper job was. Is that it? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? As always, Adam is quick to poke fun, but Martin can't believe his eyes either, and suggests that the only reason Johnny has the car is that his employers secretly hate him. Is that your new company car then? You know it is! Do they not like you there? Luckily, the car gets stolen at the end of the episode. Number 9. Is he Hitler? Hello, Mr. Morris. Your bloody house just broke my light! He wasn't in many episodes, but one of the show's most memorable characters is definitely Mr. Morris, Grandma's 82-year-old boyfriend. <coughs> is he having a real... Mr. Morris? <coughs> Mum! Don't worry, he always does this. <coughs> That's how it feels. His first appearance has no shortage of iconic moments, from faking a heart attack to forcing the boys to go with him while he buys prophylactics from a corner shop. All these antics leave Adam and Johnny pondering one question in particular. Is Mr. Morris actually Hitler? He looked like Hitler. It's, it's not Hitler, is it? This is prompted when Jim comes to the house and points out how much Mr. Morris looks like Hitler, what with the moustache and his authoritarian attitude. This isn't great for the family considering they're all Jewish. Oh, your top's come off, has it? You want so as well, do you? Pardon? Right! Mr. Morris! Jesus Christ. Come on! Pull, pull him up! Mr. Morris! Number 8, Johnny's Tattoo. Hold on a minute. Oh, you're such a turd! All evening, Johnny's acting like he's hiding something while nursing his right arm. We quickly find out that what he's been protecting is his brand new tattoo, and not a great one at that. Don't tell mom. Sorry, we were just. Johnny's got a tattoo! What? You shit! Ow! Immediately, Adam spills the beans to their parents, and Jackie forces Johnny to take off his jumper so that everyone can see it. It's a poorly drawn skull with red hair and a message in Latin, which Adam quickly translates as saying, Live fast, die young. Not family comes first, as Johnny told Jackie. Jonathan wants to die young. Does he? Yes, he wants to die young. Tell him. Was... You're not to die young. <laughs> God, I hate you all! Jackie's furious about what he's done, and when the tattoo turns out to be so awful regardless, who can blame her? Number seven, salt. Wait a minute. I know what you've done. What? Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh! You bastard! One of the most popular running jokes is that the boys are constantly putting salt in each other's drinks, but this comes back to bite them as early as the first episode. Adam believes he'll have the last laugh when he pours salt directly into Johnny's mug so that the salt will already be in there if he uses it. Better not be doing anything in there. Sorry? But things go awry when a man arrives to collect the sofa bed. The sofa bed is for his ill father, and then he finds out his father has died. Sorry, sorry. What's he saying? There was salt in his tea. Salt? Is this water? Uh, I think so. I put salt in his tea? <laughs> they give him a cup of tea and a glass of water that both turn out to be full of salt. Why would you do that? Why, why have you put salt in everything? My father's just died. And you're just putting salt in everything. Number six, Jim comes for dinner. Instead of constantly interrupting, Jim's finally been invited for Friday night dinner. 
Things start off on a predictably weird note, with Jim constantly telling everyone shalom and gifting Jackie a model zebra. Oh, um, th thanks, Jim. It was my auntie's. Oh. She had it by her deathbed. Then he pulls out a homemade yarmulke he's cut out of his own shirt and smashes a plate against the wall. Dinner gets even more chaotic when he finds a live mouse on his plate, much to Jackie's horror. Um, mouse. <laughs> and ends when Jim accidentally throws an entire can of red paint over himself and the living room. Here, let me just move this out of the way for you. Oh, be careful! <laughs> <laughs> Jim's attempts to be politically correct go hilariously wrong. Number 5. Car Radio Adam's a musician and has written a jingle to be used in a radio ad for car insurance. When it's time to listen, they can't find a single working radio in the house, except for a duck-shaped one, and have to go sit outside in the car to tune in. I'm not listening to it on that! Why not? Because it's a duck. It's not a duck. It's a radio. Well, we're just going to have to listen in the car. But they accidentally put music on full blast, deafening themselves, while Jim stares at them from the doorstep until they're forced to listen on the duck anyway. Now how do I get this bloody radio? Oh, oh, oh my god, that was the loudest thing I've ever... Unfortunately for Adam, the ad is a resounding disappointment regardless. Most of his composition is cut out, leaving only three notes, and he's upset for the rest of the night. Double O, double O. That's... Where's all my music? Five, seven, double O, double O. Is it good? Hang a third. Number four, Coffin. In... Oh, oh, bad luck, Dad! Might as well be carrying a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. You're carrying it with me. What? The Goodmans are attending the funeral of their Uncle Sol, and Adam and Johnny have been enlisted as pallbearers, which they're not particularly pleased about. They mutually swear that they'll never carry another coffin, which puts Jackie in a bad mood when they say that this includes her coffin at her funeral. Okay, we'll carry his coffin, but that is the last coffin we ever carry. What? Yeah, the last one. Apart from mine, obviously. She kicks up a fuss about how disappointed she is in them that they're refusing to honour her wishes, though she's certainly quite a way off dying. Well, clearly asking my own two sons to carry their mother's body is too much to ask. It is quite a lot to ask. Unbelievable. Even with Martin on her side, the boys won't budge. The rest of the day is soured even more than it already was. Well, you'll carry your mother's body. Thank you. Just make sure you wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Caravan. Were you wearing a blindfold when you bought that? What? Or were you just in a coma, pillock? Most of the episode is preoccupied with the awful purchase Martin has made, buying a revolting caravan on the cheap and parking it up in front of the house. All without consulting Jackie, of course. Martin's insistent that they should all eat dinner inside, which Jackie is absolutely refusing to do. The caravan itself is putrid when he gives the boys a tour, full of ugly upholstery, awful fittings, and a chemical toilet that doesn't work properly. He goes to extreme lengths, stealing the chicken and refusing to hand it over. Give me back my chicken! This is ridiculous. Piss off! How has he got his top off already? But it turns out it's hard to eat a nice dinner in a caravan that's a major electrical hazard. And if I press this button... <laughs> ah! Number 2. Dead Fox Martin's got a secret he's keeping from Jackie, but the boys unwittingly stumble across it when she asks them to put some freshly made profiteroles in the freezer. Leave it! Dad! I said leave it! What is the matter with you? When they're finally able to see what's inside, Johnny drops the dessert in shock. Martin stashed a fox's corpse in there, in the hope of hiring someone to taxidermy it for him so he can put it on display. No! Oh, Jesus! Oh, my God! The profiteroles! You shitting crap face! What is a fox doing in the freezer? A fox! Just keep your bloody voices down! The dead fox is a creepy sight, and they go to stranger and stranger lengths to hide it from Jackie throughout the episode, even leaving the carcass to defrost in the dining room for a bit. I'll see you all. Jim? You okay, Jim? Number 1. Wilson's Death Jim's dog Wilson was a fixture of the show from the beginning until its tragic demise in the finale of Series 5. Jim, 
I think he's dead. Distraught over Wilson's loss, despite the fact he was terrified of them, Jim somehow convinces the Goodmans that Wilson deserves a proper burial in their garden. Here we are. After they dig the grave, Jim delivers a fittingly bizarre eulogy, even throwing the lead in the grave as well, rather than removing it. On the spot, he comes up with a terrible poem about all the things Wilson loved to do, such as drinking water. You loved to drink water from your bowl with your tongue until you were full. But strangest of all is the revelation he's never taken Wilson to a vet in his entire life, which, well, explains a lot. This cross will stand as a permanent reminder for the whole community. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.